In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a CNC machine to make a subwoofer enclosure. If you're like most guys, you just wanna jump on the machine and get rolling, but the first C in CNC stands for computer, so step one is to sit down at the computer, fire up some software, and start laying out your project. For now, I wanna focus on setting up the machine. We'll talk more about the software later. The machine I'm using right here behind me is a Shapeoko 5 Pro. I'll be sure to give you links to it down in the video description if you wanna check out this machine. The main reason why I bought this machine is because they up upgraded from the four version and added ball screws. You can see the ball screws here and you get a better result with ball screws. Belts tend to stretch and slip, so ball screws are better. So the first thing you gotta do is actually turn the machine on. I've got my control box mounted right down here and the switch is right underneath it. This machine right here has the upgraded VFD spindle. So I've got to turn on my spindle. The control box for the spindle is right back here. So we'll turn that on. Everything's turned on. You can hear the cooling fans running and I'm not showing you the assembly process because Shapeoko has a ton of really good videos out there already on how to assemble it. The goal today is to show you how to actually run the machine. This button down here is the e-stop. With the main power on, you just turn that and it turns on and the lights will turn on. Here, let me show you those lights. Next, you're gonna fire up the software. This is called Carbide Motion, came free with the machine, which is one reason why I went with this machine. Just hit connect to cutter, and then we'll initialize the machine. And the machine will move up and down on the Z axis, that's the vertical axis. Then it's gonna go over to this far corner over here and zero itself out. After it zeroes itself out, the whole assembly moves to the front of the machine where it's nice and in the way. What I like to do at this point is go into the computer and go to jog and do rapid position. I'm gonna hit north, that'll put the machine in the very back center. Now I'm gonna load some material onto the machine. The bed itself is right at 49 inches. And even with like this piece right here that I use to position my material, which takes up a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that you still get a full 49 inches front to back of working area. But right here is a device that I'm gonna show you in a bit. That device actually gets in the way. So functionally, you don't have the full 48 inches, you've got more like 47. But what I have found is it's difficult to get your work holding pieces into these outer slats. What I have found is the optimal width is about here to here, which means with the way the work holding works, really about 38 inches, about like that. So if I need bigger material, I'll disable some features and I can put a bigger piece up here, but I try to keep my material width to about 38 inches and then in four inch increments because these pieces right here are about four inches center to center. So I'm gonna grab my sheet goods. It's a piece of MDF and just slide it on up here. And so I'm using this piece right here to keep things. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. Next, grab the Allen key that came with it and start clamping down your work piece. In order to get to all the rails so you can clamp your work piece, you wanna put the machine out away from the wall. When I first had this set up, it was over in the corner. That's a bad idea. I couldn't get to two of the four sides. Here I have access to pretty much the whole machine. So don't put this baby in a corner. Nobody puts baby in a corner. First time I did this, it took me a while to figure out how to clamp everything down. But what I found after doing it a few times, I've gotten a whole lot faster at clamping this stuff down. You might be tempted to take this clamp right here and clamp right at the edge. Don't do that because you're gonna to need to put this device right here, right on that edge. And if the clamp's in the way, that's not gonna work. So what you'll find yourself doing is clamping it down, realizing the clamp's in the way, and then having to move it. I'm gonna put this right here since I know I'm gonna need it there. So back to the computer, let's hit the south button and jog the machine forward so that we can work with the bit. Installed in the machine right now, I've got a quarter inch upcut bit. That is the workhorse. That's the one you're gonna do most of your MDF cutting with. And we're gonna take it out. And we're gonna replace it with this bit here, which is kind of nothing. 
Back over to the computer and we're gonna hit the Southwest button and shuffle the machine over a little bit, like so. So this thing right here is called the Bit Zero. It plugs into your machine and then there's this piece right here, which is a magnet that will clip onto your spindle, like that right there. Then you just position your spindle So you position the probe inside of the little hole there, and then over on the computer, you choose probe and corner and begin probe, and it will then probe. Then it's back to the computer where we can go to run and we can load the file for our job. And the problem I often run into is everything is backed up to my cloud and I can't just open it apparently. So let me see if I can get it working. I just need to wait a few seconds for all the files to sync. I did all the layout on my computer inside. After the file gets loaded, all you've got to do is verify that the job looks as intended and then you can hit start job. After you hit start job, you've got to hit start again and then the machine will verify that you have the correct end mill inserted in the collet. In this case, we want our quarter inch upcut end mill. We still have the probe in the end mill from when we set the zero a few seconds ago, so I've got to change the bit before we start the job. With the bit swapped out, we're going to hit resume and let the machine rock and roll. In order to verify that the Z-axis depth is correct, the bit's going to hit that bit setter. We're going to slap on our dust boot, turn on the dust collection, and we're gonna start making some sawdust. You can see in this shot that the machine is bobbing up and down on the z-axis. This is a drilling procedure where the bit is pecking down an eighth of an inch and then retracting so we can clear out any trash. I've got it set up to do the drill cuts first because the drill cuts don't do a lot of damage to the work surface. The board still has quite a bit of integrity so I don't have to worry about the board flying loose while it's drilling. On this one piece right here, I've got to drill out 57 precision holes, which would be a very difficult and time consuming thing to do if you were drilling it with a power drill. All of the cuts on this one board right here could take up to an hour and a half. My recommendation is that you put on some hearing protection if you're going to stay in the room while the machine is running and you want to use this time in order to work on something productive instead of just staring at the machine. And what I want to do right now is say thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. $10 and up patrons get their name in the video like these guys right down here on the screen with a big bonus shout out to $25 and up patrons Jonathan, Joe, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. There's no way I could run this YouTube channel without the financial support of viewers like you. If you like what I'm doing, I would appreciate your support over on Patreon. You can sign up for as little as $3 a month, and if you pay for an entire year up front, you get a discount. So head over to Patreon today and check out all the cool behind the scenes content. To see how I designed all of these cuts in the CNC software, click right here. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.